So the code name Broken Arrow actually has a lot of different meanings and it's had a lot of different meanings in the past. Doesn't mean that there have been multiple projects, but the term was used for many different scenarios. So for example, if you've seen the film We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson, the term Broken Arrow was used whenever they needed air support help because the enemy had broken through their defense lines. That's one of them. Then there's other cases where Broken Arrow meant some other things, but the main thing, at least in today's day and age, of nuclear weaponry and all that, is that Broken Arrow refers to a scenario where the entire fluidity of the nuclear system may be at risk. And it also means that a material, a vital material, such as plutonium, that can make nuclear bombs, or an actual fully built and assembled nuclear warhead, or nuclear bomb of any kind, has gone missing, or went missing in an accident, or something like that. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because Broken Arrow is a very interesting scenario because, and I'm not trying to discredit the people that have unfortunately died due to instances that occurred that with Broken Arrow, but what I'm trying to say here is that there may be a possibility, a, a quite a significant one, I give it like a 70-75% chance that the United States government is in fact conspiring with themselves in order to make accidents, or in order to make accidents seem like something that was just all screwed up. So when it really, in fact, wasn't an accident. And let me give you a couple examples here. So there have been in the last 50 to 60 years over, I think it's close to 60 cases where nuclear materials and or warheads have gone missing. Either they've been falling into the ocean in some cases because of... Um, uncontrolled plane landings uh, it has to do with also something called operation excuse me chrome dome and that was when they lost the most warheads which had to do with the united states using extremely high altitude aerial i guess you could call them well plane b-52 bombers essentially that also held nuclear warheads that they used to always be in place in case Russia attacked them during the Cold War. So that's what Chrome Dome was. But the thing is, is that they may in fact be misplacing these nuclear warheads on purpose. Now, why do I say this? And this is the most interesting part, at least to me personally. So we know that nuclear fission and nuclear technology is not just used for creating a bomb or for destruction. It could also be used to help shape different objects and structures that other things or other materials or machines cannot tear down. So for example, it's been said by many whistleblowers that the underground military bases are being developed so quickly because of the fact that they have been able to utilize the nuclear fission and the nuclear power within certain machines to drill tunnels through and go through anywhere from 6 to 10 miles per day using the nuclear capabilities of drilling through and melting rock like it's nothing. All right, and what's interesting about this is that if you investigate or if you look into it, which I've done, there's no public document that says that nuclear weapons could be used to help a drilling machine create underground bases. And of course, you now say, Dave, why would there be? Why would there be something that has to do with that? Why would they make it public? So, okay, that's step one. That's not public. We've only known about this in the last 20, 30 years and have sort of touched upon it because of whistleblowers and some evidence here and there and eyewitnesses, right? With that being said, okay, so number one is you're making top secret need to know only underground bases for God knows what. I've done many episodes on it. Why... Are you not saying you need nuclear weapons? Because if you did, then it would cause the whole world to look at you or look at certain parts within the intelligence community and the military and say, why do you need all these nuclear weapons? So what do you do? You stage a situation where you coincidentally lost these warheads. Now, I want to make something very clear before I go on. Unfortunately, 
a lot of soldiers have passed away due to what seem to be legitimate accidents. Now, whether or not they were accidents or not, I'm not sure. But what I do know for a fact is that these soldiers passed away. I confirmed with the families and things like that, so I know that for a fact. I didn't speak to the families themselves, but I did enough research to show that they passed away. I have tremendous respect for veterans and people who fight to preserve this nation. And honestly, the whole entire, all of North America and the West. And so I don't want their names to 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 go to pass away in vain, so to speak. With that being said, I can't allow their very unfortunate deaths, may God rest their soul, to stop me from looking at the possibility that some of these accidents, not all, because everybody's human, mistakes happen, but some of these accidents may have in fact been staged in order to bring these nuclear warheads and weapons and materials to back into the United States in a very covert, under the table kind of way to use for these types of machines that they absolutely needed as quickly as possible in order to help develop and build these bases. Okay. And the thing about this that makes it even more interesting is that all of these materials that go missing seem to, if you look at the timeline, timeline of, of it all, the materials that go missing fall in line perfectly with many whistleblower accounts that say, well, we started drilling at this time because we finally got the nuclear materials needed to, to, to finish off the, the massive drilling machine that we use. And it happened only days after nuclear warheads go missing. Now, again, of course, it cannot be officially proved because then if it was, then that would create a whole worldwide chaos. I mean, countries would be going crazy saying, well, if they could do that, who knows what else they're doing, right? So I guess you could call it a coup of sorts, a staged coup of nuclear warheads and nuclear materials gone missing coincidentally that seem to be on the black market, as the U.S. officially says, may be on the black market, when in reality, the U.S. has it themselves. Now, I'm not saying everybody in the government is in on this either. I'm not saying that. I think there are certain factions within the military industrial complex that cross over between the intelligence community that stage these types of programs and situations and allow these things to happen. And to be honest with you, to give you a quick example, if you've seen the film Argo with Ben Affleck, where they had to pose as Canadian filmmakers trying to make a movie to rescue a bunch of ambassadors from Iran in the who were in the United Nations, uh, sorry, the U.S. Embassy in Iran, you'll notice, if you watch the film, that in this case it's the CIA. There are programs within the CIA that only a handful of people know about. And they can they view their co-workers in the CIA who don't know about it as people who are just as much as, of a risk as regular civilians. And so it makes you think, because now you have to understand that there are programs within programs that only a select few people know about, and they sanction these operations covertly within the CIA, within the group in the CIA, within those handful of people in that group. So it's like layer on layer on layer. And then if word gets out that this program is being sanctioned or something like that, they deny it and destroy the evidence within the third layer so that the second layer above them of people maybe they'll hear whispers and rumors but can't confirm it and then the people at the at the top layer of the CIA in this case know nothing about it and they never will and so you have to think about it in that sense because i'm not saying every so-called accident is a staged coup or a staged plan to retrieve the nuclear materials all i'm saying is that a handful of them seem to have been planned now unfortunately and i really hope it didn't have to cause or sacrifice the lives of soldiers because again, these are just hardworking people trying to make money, put food on the table, and defend their country. And I'll say this again, I have tremendous respect for them. I really do. And I don't mean to discredit their name or their reputation by or their intelligence. But at the same time, these things need to be looked into and these things have to be said and talked about. And... The U.S. government, like many other countries, has no problem sacrificing a handful of people in order for a much larger plan to be put into play. It's very simple. Very, very simple. So, 
not the longest episode in the world. And you may say that this might be a conspiracy within a conspiracy. But at the same time, I think those things happen all of the time. I mean, I can name probably three or four examples that are happening in, at this very moment in the world off the top of my head where it may in fact be a cover-up within a cover-up just because not everyone within certain factions or within certain agencies or institutions know about certain things, nor will they ever know about certain things really. So please, I want you guys to let me know what you think because... There's not much to cover on the fact that on the details of certain things. I mean, again, we can go through eyewitness accounts and we can go through many different things. But the, the premise of this episode is, do you believe these things happen? And I think they honestly do. I think it's extremely unfortunate if someone has to die in the process. I think it's absolutely terrible. But again, we cannot let that. We can't. How do I explain this? We we can't allow that to prevent us from talking about it. And that is exactly the strategy that, for example, the government would use. So, for example, if before I end this quickly, if I was um, a journalist at, say, a, a mainstream media network and I wanted to ask the government about this or the CIA or something, the first comeback they would use is say, well, American soldiers died in that, th- in that, um, in that accident. You really think we would stage that? And then they would act all offended and everything. Some cases, it might actually be true. Other cases, not so much. It's just a big front. It's just a big play to put on. So again, it's unfortunate. It might be actually one of the more, I guess, one of the episodes I've done where I'm a little bit resentful to make. But at the same time, like I said, it, it needs to be talked about. So again, thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.